In this video, I take on the challenge of a Red Riding Hood themed shoot in the studio. Autorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today we have a themed shoot. Can you guess what the theme might be? Yeah, it's going to be Red Riding Hood. And for my model today, this is Fern. Do you want to say hello, Fern? Hello. She's going to be Red Riding Hood and we've got a specific idea of the shot in mind. So we're going to end up hopefully with a fairly tight headshot, very shallow depth of field look to this image. We may even put in a little bit of snow later on, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So let's talk about lighting first of all. Now for this shoot, I'm going to be using my little Streaklight 360 and we've got it here with a beauty dish and the shower cap on. Now that's going to be the key light, the main light, but we'll build this up bit by bit. Let's start with this light. Let's see how it comes out on its own. So first thing to do, of course, is to take a meter reading. So let's do that. So I've got my flash meter. I'm just going to pop it underneath Fern's chin, pointing back at the light. And that is giving me a very low power, F1.8. Fern, can I get you to take a little step forward for me? Now, if you move the light or your subject, then your flash power will change. So let's do the same thing again. And it's now gone up to F2.8. So that little step forward was almost a stop extra in light. And that's what I'm going to shoot at, F2.8. So let's take a picture like that and see how it comes out. So here we go, let's do a couple of shots. Lovely, and again, one more. Fantastic, okay, so at F2.8, with our light fairly elevated above, we get this harsh, contrasty light, lots and lots of shadows underneath the chin and underneath the eyes, and of course the background has dropped off completely black because very little light is actually hitting the background. Now we'll deal with the background in a minute, but let's start with just getting Fern's face correctly lit. Light from above is fine, but we need a light from below just to fill in the shadows underneath the chin. And although we could add in a second light, we could also use a reflector. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a little reflector in just underneath Fern's chin. So let's bring this in. There we go. Just like that. And that'll bounce light from the beauty dish onto the reflector and onto Fern's face. That's the idea. Let's take a picture and see how it comes out. Okay, so here we go, same thing again. Right. And one more. Lovely. Okay, so, wow, what a difference. Now the shadows underneath the chin are nicely filled in, but it's not as bright as the light from above, so we still have that nice beauty lit look. But that background, the background is jet black. Now, if you want a jet black background, this is how you do it. I mean, whatever your background color, even if it was a, a white, it would go very, very dark, possibly even black. And there's not much of a gap behind here. There's maybe two and a half meters at the most. But I don't want a black background. I want to have some of that texture and tone coming through in the shot. So we need another light. So I've got here, this is the, uh, the Streaklight 180. So this is the smaller brother of the, the 360 and it'll be perfect as a background light. Now I'm gonna put it right behind Fern, so you can't see it, but trust me, it's here, right behind her, and it's pointing directly at the background. Now, we can change the power in a second, but let's take a test shot and see how it comes out, and we'll work out whether that's right or wrong from there. So Fern, let's go for another shot. Here we go. Brilliant, and one more. Bang, okay, perfect. So looking at the shots, we've got some light in the background. It's a little bit off to one side and it's not as bright as I would like. That's why you take a test shot. So now you can refine it a little bit. So we'll move that light ever so slightly to the side. And I can increase the power of the light here using the streak light remote. So I can add in maybe an extra stop of light. Three clicks, that's one more stop of light. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. And again, perfect. Okay, so with that, I've now got a little bit more light around the back of Fern, and I think that's a, a nice balance on the amount of light that's being produced by the background light, and it's balancing up with our key light as well. But there's one more thing we can do. The color. The color is gonna be whatever color the background you're using is, and whilst this gray is really good, I do love my gray background, what we want with this shoot is to make it look like we're actually outside. So we wanna change the color of the background. 
Now we could go with a sort of a cold blue color because we're, we're going to use a bit of snow in a little bit and blue, snow, that could work well. But of course, Red Riding Hood, you'd be out in the, the woods, wouldn't you? So we want to perhaps go with a more woody color. And to do that, I'm just going to grab myself a gel. So the street lights have gels that are, are correctly made for them, but of course you can get gels to go on any flash that you like. This one just clips to the front of the street light like that. And that's going to add a bit of green color into the background. Now remember, when you add a gel, you're going to change the amount of light that comes through the flash because the gel will act like a, a bit of a pair of sunglasses. So you might need to change the exposure. Best way, take a test shot, see how it comes out. Okay, so let's go again. Here we go. Brilliant. One more. Good stuff. So with the green, it's there, but it's not as powerful, not as bright as I would like. I'm going to increase the flash by one more stop, just on the background only. One more stop of light on the background. Let's take a shot there. And again, brilliant. So there we go. Now that light is much brighter, but it's not overpowering. It's a beautiful balance between the key light and the background. That's the lighting look I want to go for. Let's do a shoot where we use this lighting look and see what amazing pictures we can come up with. Okay, Fern, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Look down towards that. Okay, and we'll do one more and we're done. Okay, so there we go. Uh, wow, that was a really exciting shoot. Uh, snow, I've never worked with snow before. Uh, have you? No, it's the first time for me too, but it was fun. <laughs> it was great fun. So what we're gonna do now is get our favorite picture into Photoshop and we're gonna do some editing and we'll do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Fake snow in a can, absolutely brilliant stuff for photography. Now, if you are gonna use this, do make sure you read and follow the, the safety instructions on the back. But the end result was pretty impressive stuff. Now, the lens I was using was all part of the plan. I was using my Canon 50mm f1.8 lens because I wanted a really shallow depth of field to make the snow have a very shallow depth of field and add to the sense of three dimensions in the image. It really is a brilliant lens. It's kind of a must have. Every photographer should have a 50mm f1.8 lens in their kit bag. So what about the end result? Well, this stuff is quite random. You, you don't really have much control over where it's going to go. So you won't be surprised to hear there's a little bit of cloning to do in this image. Let's have a look at a couple of ways we can do it. So this is the, the picture and I've got a bit of work to do. There are some large lumps of snow that shouldn't be there. There's another one kind of down here that's in the way. And there's some small fine bits on the face, which I'm, some I like and some I don't. Let's start with the fine stuff. To remove the fine little spots of snow, I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Now, some of the spots I don't mind. I mean, the ones that are white, they look fine, but the ones that are gray, less so. Why is there gray snow? Well, with the, the, the light we were using, it was quite a small area of light. So any snow that was just outside is going to fall into shadow. And it's going to give you that slight gray feel. So that's just one of those the things about the beauty dish. It's not a, not a great big light source, but then that's, that's fine. I'm not going to take all of them out. I'll leave a few on because it adds to the feeling of snow. What about the larger stuff? Well, there's a large bit down here that definitely needs to go. For the larger things, I'm going to switch to the patch tool because the patch tool allows me to select around larger areas. And the reason I love the patch tool is when you move that selection by dragging it, you can see exactly where you're going to sample from. And I can follow the line of the ribbon just to make sure that that ribbon line continues in a nice, neat direction. There you go, it's gone. Now you might think I'm going to patch the hair as well, and that might work, except there's not really much to sample from on the hair. 
and that is quite a large lump that needs to go. And I'd like to keep the hair looking real. So what I did was I took more than one picture. You kind of have to with this sort of thing. And I took lots of pictures before we use the snow. And this one is a very similar pose, very similar distance. And I'm going to use the hair from this and put it over the other shot. Now, if you don't have a can of fake snow, you might have lots of pictures like this one where there's no snow in the shot. Don't worry, I've got a neat little trick to add some digital fake snow inside of Photoshop, and we'll come to that right at the end. So with this one, all I'm going to do is get the rectangular marquee, and I'll make a rough selection over the area I want to uh, copy across, the clean area, plus plenty of extra space around it. I'll go up to Edit and Copy. I'll go back to the main image and I'll choose Edit and Paste. We'll just drop the opacity a little bit just so we can see through that pasted layer. And then we can put it roughly in the right place. And I'm really looking at trying to follow the hair. Now, the, it's not going to be absolutely perfect because the hood or the... Yeah, and that, that's, it's, the, yeah, it's just not quite in the same place. But that's about as good as it's going to get. So we'll need to work with what we've got. OK, let's pop the opacity back up again. And I'm going to put a layer mask on there by going to Layer, Layer Mask, Hide All. So that will.